Eng, please take your seat. Good morning, members, government officials, and also deputations and um, individuals. Thank you very much for coming to the uh, public hearing on enhancing uh, law enforcement against shop front extensions. Um, we have uh, two sessions in this public hearing. This is a second session. Altogether, there are 56 deputations and individuals coming to express their views. In this session, 26 speakers will speak to us. I'd like to remind you the following. As the chairman, each one will be given three minutes. And if you have already given your written submissions, we uh, um, please just highlight your views and make some supplements or reiterate certain points you want to make. And after the meeting, if you have anything to add, please also uh, do so in writing. We will certainly uh, bring your views to the attention of our members, and we will continue to pursue this issue with the administration. In front of you, you can uh, see that uh, Channel 0 is the floor, Channel 1 is Cantonese, Channel 2 is English, and Channel 3 is Cantonese. And when you speak, please speak into the microphone. You don't need to um, move too close to the microphone. Please adhere to one language instead of adopting cocktail language to facilitate uh, the work of the simultaneous interpreters. Uh, I'd like to remind you that uh, what you say at the meeting is not protected by the uh, LegCo Powers and Privileges, or Privileges Ordinance. That means your submissions are also not protected by the legislation. So you will be responsible for what you say. I also remind you that um, there are certain rules. Um, um, you have to observe the security rules um, when you attend uh, this meeting, whether you are here or in the public gallery. Um, the rules have been sent to you uh, in, front, um, in the letter of invitation, and also the rules are set before you on table. Um, after the deputations have spoken, I will ask the officials to respond, and I will also open the floor to members for questions. And I will introduce the uh, representatives uh, the government representatives uh, in due course. All right, without further ado, if I may invite Ms. Chiu to speak. Good morning, Chairman. I uh, am an executive, um, show show executive, working for um, the, those in the um, in Taiwan Eastern District. Now, there is a question of enhancing law enforcement against shop front extension. I interviewed 200 more residents and shop operators. I want to reflect their views. There are three points uh, on law enforcement, uh, fixed penalty, and standard law enforcement. On the strength of law enforcement, 90% of the view that the administration should step up enforcement against illegal shop uh, extension, in particular, say, in Xiao Wan Market and also Yifeng Street of Taiwan. Uh, they are black spots. 90% of the respondents support fixed penalty. The amount uh, varies from uh, $300 uh, to $10,000. People have uh, different views. Uh, the majority in favor of $1,500, which is equivalent to littering. And uh, shop operators should not regard the fine as part of the rent. And there should be a review in two years' time um, in order to uh, review the uh, deterrent effect on the shop operators. Uh, they support legislation. As for a standard of law enforcement, according to the survey, people or the residents of the view that if obstruction um, is caused on the pedestrians and also on traffic, then um, there should be law enforcement. And if um, serious uh, rep uh, repetition, then they, um, there should be uh, they should be dealt with more seriously. And for minor obstruction, that should be uh, dealt with by warning. 
um, there is a demand for a fixed penalty, and government should consider that, and government should consider stepping up law enforcement measure. Um, public, there is no consensus in the public. Uh, the government should conduct further consultation. It's hoped that frontline officers uh, should find a suitable balance in enforcing the law so as not to cause conflict in the community. Thank you. Next, Mr. Wang Si Chen. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. I have nothing to do with the catering business. I'm just an ordinary resident. Uh, I have friends working in a restaurant, in restaurants, and also I have friends uh, who are residents. I have friends who are members of the owners' corporations. I have done an opinion survey in five days. I did two thousand questionnaires. Uh, questionnaires. And uh, ninety percent support maintaining this special feature, uh, but they don't want the situation to be a mess. If the um, restaurants are willing to comply with the rules, if the trade association is willing to set the rules and set the boundary, and if their members toe the line, then they are willing to accept it. Uh, they uh, can avoid uh, this. Um, Disaster. Now you encourage uh, the government encourages harmony, and the tourism board uh, encourages uh, special characteristics. We we have been tourists overseas, and we know uh, we appreciate the special uh, characteristics of different communities. We we don't um, want to patronize uh, the uh, restaurants. Um, which uh, rent um, shops from the Ling Reed. We need to uphold the uh, Lion Rock spirit, and we don't want to penalize people. And penalizing people will only cause further division and conflicts. Uh, that is that is not helpful. Why can't the tourism uh, bureau or tourism board rather? And the uh, TIC and also the trade associations uh, work with. The Home Affairs um, Bureau and the owners' corporations to uh, send to set up a charter so that um, the shops can supply uh, can comply. If they don't comply, then law enforcement should be taken out against them strongly. If they don't comply, then we should uh, enforce the they should enforce the law. Even the uh, shop operators will not be against it. Uh, there are big chasms between um, the political parties and the government and uh, the legislature and the executive. Why can't we work together? I think the owners corporations, the trade associations should work together, say if a street of a certain width is um, not wide enough, then there will not be any uh, extension allowed. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Next, Mr. Hoinan, Hoinan Ching. Okay. Now we have a, a system. We should check the ID, uh, confirm the ID. Um, Chairman, I support Mr. Wong's view. He has spoken. What I want to say, but I will uh, ask my uh, colleague to uh, confirm your identity. Next, I am a shop operator, which uh, who, who caused shop obstruction two years ago. I rented a shop um, to do um, to, to um, operate a restaurant. I didn't intend. To, uh, to to occupy the street, but business was difficult. I therefore put tables and chairs in the street. We were prosecuted by the FEHD, and the um, amount of fine was very big. But we have to do business, and we continue to occupy the street, and we. Have been continuous, continuously prosecuted by 
the uh, FGHD, we really don't know what to do. Even though if we close down, we are just uh, ordinary people. We may uh, still owe a few hundred dollars of fine. We just want to do a small business. Is any room for us to um, reach an agreement with the residents and also the government departments? Now the uh, lady said that ninety percent of the respondents support enforcement, uh, strengthening law enforcement, but have uh, she considered that there are people who are in favor of not prosecuting the um, shop operators? The proposal is one thousand five hundred dollars per ticket, and f uh, every ticket f uh, for fifteen minutes. So uh, should the shops uh, just close down? There is no solution. Uh, you just enforce the law until uh, the shops close down. Can we really uh, hire uh, rent a shop uh, for say a hundred thousand dollars and just uh, maintain a living? Next, Mr. Lamping Lang. Uh, Mr. Wong, Si Chin has already uh, spoken what I intend to say. Uh, we've, I've heard that, that they oppose this, oppose that, and I also want to ask if they all oppose, then how can there be so many customers patronizing uh, those shops? If they don't patronize the shops, they will not cause any obstruction in the street. Um, I think uh, there should be a regular discussion between the various parties or among the various parties in order to solve the problem. Serious, um, serious law enforcement will only, strict law enforcement will only lead to shops go closing down. I agree with Mr. Wong Si Chin. I hope that the government can uh, help to uh, pull the parties together and try to improve the situation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lam. Uh, Mr. Ho Ho Man, Chairman of the Food and Environmental Hygiene Committee of the Wang Tai Sin District Council. Um, uh, there is a submission by our district council chairman, and we have given this to the um, secretariat. We generally support the administration um, consultation, and we support the administration to formulate measures and step up uh, law enforcement against the uh, shop extensions. I'll give my personal view. As for uh, strengthening law enforcement, uh, it's very important to set the uh, standard. Now you give um, a very um, a very effective tool um, or weapon, rather a very uh, powerful weapon to the uh, law enforcement officers. Um, but have you got a very uh, clear cut standard? If not, then there will be a lot of problems. Now, after 10 p.m., after the FEHD uh, officers uh, have gone off duty, then uh, street obstruction becomes very serious. If you do not have joint operations, if you do uh, with the police and the land department, if you don't have manpower, then even if you have the law, law enforcement is still very difficult. I've heard uh, many deputations complain against uh, street obstruction by shops, uh, 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 street obstruction by restaurants, but m other um, people are causing obstruction. Say, for example, in, in front of a, a local cafe, 
um, there is a shop front of about uh, a dozen or so uh, feet, and then four or five feet is for the entrance to the uh, local cafe, and then another ten feet is rented out um, to a store selling dry seafood. Uh, that's causing a serious obstruction. Same for um, the um, extension caused by um, the dispensaries. Now they cause a lot of uh, uh, trouble, and there are um, um, there, there 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 are patrons, of course, but those living above are caused by no uh, really uh, suffering from noise nuisance. Therefore, some of the residents are upstairs are so agitated that they throw beer bottles down into uh, the streets. We have talked to the shop operators, asked them to exercise a self-restraint, a self-discipline, but they don't. How can we um, solve the problem if there is no enforcement of the law? Next, Mr. Li Tatian also comes from the Wong Tai Sin District Council. Thank you, Chairman. Allow me to walk through. Uh, please give way. This is a really uh, good API. It shows that shop um, restriction is very a uh, sort of six obstruction is very serious. But this is not something that's recent. In fact, street obstruction has been around for a long time, and that is because the enforcement had not been strict, and uh, sometimes the, these obstructions are disregarded by the enforcement officers, and this is the result that we are facing. Uh, for the Shui Wo uh, Street Market in Kuntong, in fact, it is already at a state where it is completely unacceptable. As mentioned by others earlier, uh, the offenders are recalcitrant. In the Shui Wo Street, uh, there can be easily 20 tables uh, for eateries put out at night. Can you imagine the residents upstairs, uh, the noise, uh, the noise of the patrons, the noise from the cooking and the hygiene situation, rubbish everywhere and uh, empty uh, bottles, etc. This is a big nuisance to the residents, and therefore I'm in support of uh, strengthening the enforcement and also uh, raising the fine. But of course, we will have certain yardstick and guidelines for enforcement and penalties. The FEHD officers who are uh, doing the enforcement right now basically will not be able to carry the work required. They basically stop operation by 5 p.m. I think with this new um, uh, penalties and the operations uh, guidelines coming into place, we will have to put in a lot more resources. And before then, before putting in resources for enforcement, there will have to be more education for the people at large in Hong Kong before this can actually be successful at all. And one last point I would like to make, apart from the fixed uh, fine, I think the point system should be retained. I think it will be a, a an effective deterrent. If we do not maintain this, that is a point system, I think the uh, street obstruction can only become more serious and rampant. Mr. Wong Cho Kwong. Uh, greetings. Uh, good morning, Chairman. I represent the operators of Tai, tai Pai Dongs. Well, uh, a year ago, I was a just like a, any ordinary resident in Hong Kong until half a year ago, I became an operator of a uh, Tai Pai Dong. It's, uh, six months have elapsed since I took up this trade, and I feel now that uh, we always live in fear. The operators always live in fear because they are, 
they fear the uh, uh, they they will be arrested by the enforcement officers, and they cannot focus on their work or their business because they are always in fear. Um, and we basically cater to patrons in a certain time. Uh, let's say for my stall, uh, I open three to four hours uh, at night only for those patrons. In fact, what we can do is to carry out coordination. Um, we need guidelines to affect that coordination. Um, let's say we can tell the customers that we have to close by a certain time, and uh, though even those who want to stay on and drink, we can ask them to leave. So there can be some give and take, and we can coordinate the, the efforts to make it uh, acceptable to all. Wong Kin Yip, I am a property owner and a member of the uh, Owners Association in Chinwan area. I do not know whether you have gone through the information. In fact, most of the people who come up um, are those who are disturbed by the nuisance of shop extension, but not the restaurant owners. But there is another problem besides restaurants and eateries being the big offenders. Uh, the market, the wet market also is problematic. There are triad elements which have uh, uh, which are holding hawker licenses and they are putting out carts and selling uh, fruit. Now I'm showing a picture here. This is a fruit stall in the street and in fact this fruit stall had been operating on the street and I have learned that the FEHD has two departments, one for hawkers, one for clean cleaning or cleansing. And uh, for the latter, I am never able to move them one way or the other. You can see from my submission that I say that the um, stalls and the uh, are piled up in the in the night time uh, after they have closed. I mean, I'm talking about the Young Oak Street uh, wet market. The FEHD outsourced companies are always uh, in argument. Uh, basically, they leave. Uh, their equipment, their their boxes, and everything in the streets at night. I have complained ten times. I mean, they take away cardboards to sell those uh, outsourced uh, workers because uh, these people, and also uh, the and also the stall owners are using loopholes in the law. What are we focusing on? We are focusing on the fruit stalls. The the in particular the fruit stalls. They are big offenders. I can tell you in Chinwan area, there is a triad element. They come to us to and say that he is a bona fide business operator, and. He wants to join the the committee. Everybody is uh, greedy. Everybody wants to make money, and uh, because these are these are robbers, these are thieves, and we should find them. We should punish them. I'm all for the fixed penalty and fine. I very much sympathize with uh, Mr. Wong. We are also in uh, Chin Wan. Our party had uh, received many complaints about these obstructions. In the past one to two years, we have followed up the Luther Way uh, eateries and restaurants extending into the streets. There is a mechanism under the FEHT which can um, take enforcement actions against these obstructions, but they have not been doing so effectively, and therefore the problem persisted. 
and we have had meetings with the FEHD for over a year, almost two. In fact, before, these uh, eateries were like this before in Luta Way area, and uh, people cannot even pass by. The FEHD can deal with them, but they did not want to. In fact, it can be like this. Look at this photo here. These are illegally extended eateries. It can be done, but why didn't the FEHD do, do so? Well, the inspectors told me because these operations don't start until 7 p.m. at night, and they're off duty by 5 p.m., and there's nobody to enforce, uh, take enforcement actions. And uh, we've had follow-up meetings, and uh, we basically raised to the FEHD's attention uh, that they should consider 24-hour enforcement. That is a point for the government to decide whether they want to do so. After this Ludaway incident, we have also received complaints on the Young Oak Street uh, wet market, as Mr. Wong had mentioned just now. You can see that the stalls are actually going into the pedestrian walkway, completely uh, extending the entire width of the pedestrian walkway, and the pass, uh, pedestrians have to walk into the uh, carriageway, blocking traffic, uh, causing nuisance, and also there are um, health and cleanliness issues as well. So whether it is the Lands Department, the FEHD, or the police, that they are adopting a, a delay and see uh, approach until we speak up, the political parties speak up, and they issue warnings. And on receiving the warnings, of course, the stall owners would take away the extensions. But two hours later, they put them out again. So I'm all I'm all for uh, fines to be slapped on these people. Kwai Ching District Councillor, Mr. Mm. Yes, I very much understand the situation as mentioned by the two um, speakers just now. The Luta Wai area in October of last year, they, well, basically it's been uh, handled. In fact, the FEHD officers went on from Kwai Fong and over to the district I'm responsible for to. Um, do their work. But I would like to ask a question. The FEHD team that came to Kwai Fong, we saw that they were effective. But on the other hand, the operators had their solutions uh, as well. For the night stalls, in fact, the situation became better. But on the other hand, for morning and uh, midday and deep into the night, there were there were there was no effect. It was not effective at all. I do not know why in Chun Wan the FHT special team was so successful, but not in Kwai, Kwai Chung. Uh -huh. So when we heard of this proposal, we were very encouraged because we know for these um, fixed fines and they will actually put this into the calculation of their costs. The operators will do so. In fact, the, pa the fines in the past were too low, a few hundred dollars a t for time. So for a month, um, a few hundred dollars times one or times three to four, it is a very small cost indeed for the operators. So 1,500 of fixed penalty or fine is to be supported. I also want to say that if the government cannot put into effect the proposal, and that is uh, give out repeated uh, tickets or um, uh, fine uh, issue fines, then I think we should raise the level of the fixed fine. Because if it's just uh, a if the operators are fined once or twice a month, and given the turnover, the size of the business, they can sustain that. That is to say, 
if the FHD cannot, for some of the serious offenders, give out repeated uh, uh, fines, then it would be a problem. We will have to raise the level of the fines. And looking at the consultation paper, I am concerned that we have to be very clear so as to avoid arguments and uh, controversies at the point of enforcement. We do not want to see more conflicts coming out of the enforcement um, exercise. Mr. Yim Sok Fong, I'm from the Riverside uh, Mao Yok uh, development. Uh, I'm from the home own, uh, uh, the, I'm from the owners uh, association, and the development is in Sha Tin. I am in support of the fixed fine and also the repeated uh, fines. I, for our development uh, last month, there were two shops which were uh, closed. They they had to be closed down. And as a result of that, the environment was much better and the situation was much better for the uh, development. I would like to know, apart from obstructing the streets, what other concerns did the residents have? They were concerned about safety because the uh, eateries that we are talking about in our development, <coughs> not uh, not only the uh, coffee shops, but they also include barbecue sites, barbecue uh, shops with burning fire. What would you think if you are a uh, resident? Even for us living up in the 20th floor, we can smell the smoke and the bottles and the drinking. Um, all that is very noisy late into the night, and people go to the police as well, report to the police about such no, uh, nuisance. We are not trying to drive out all operators and businesses. I actually asked them uh, why the some of the people actually uh, eat at these places, and at night they complain. They report to the police uh, against these uh, operators and uh, eateries. And the answer from them was very interesting. They said, well, I have to have breakfast, right? So they complained against the same operators that they eat from in the, in the morning. But um, I think this is a, well, truly, uh, it is truly convenient uh, for the residents, these um, eateries. But I think we want to have a win-win situation. Can they really be self-disciplinary? Uh, self I do not know. Uh, Mr. Wong, I represent the hawkers in the markets. Junyang Street has been a it has been famous for the stalls, and some um, even occupied uh, the uh, carriageway. We our trade association doesn't support that. We just ask for four or five feet, and no more. Uh, and we want to allow people to walk through. But since reunification, the FEHD may be um, too inclined towards harmony. They only issue warnings. And when they step up enforcement, they ask the trade association to talk to the FEHD. And the FEHD is not able to do many things because different government departments, such as the police, the land department, the fire services department, are involved. We ask for a line of four feet. We are able to do that. Um, we are able to draw a line at four feet, at the four feet mark, and then uh, some operators are able to comply. But when they uh, continue to move beyond the four feet line and FEHD doesn't take action, and then they will uh, trade beyond the four feet line. Chun Yang Street is 12 feet wide, and if we just occupy four or five feet, people can still walk through. I asked 
the residents if we just occupy four or five feet, do they accept that? In fact, they do. Uh, many TV stations come to uh, uh, Chunyang Street and uh, make um, videos and uh, shots. There are some uh, black sheep, say a uh, fruit stall, um, trade beyond uh, the restricted area, and the FVHD is not able to enforce the law because they only have four or five teams. And um, the FVHD um, officers also face a strong uh, reaction from these uh, unlaw-abiding, um, 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 from these traders who are not law-abiding. I think the administration has a lot of money. Why can't they employ more people and conduct prosecutions? Uh, Mapo Row is a pedestrian precinct. Uh, if shop operators just occupied a small part of the pavement, that's still okay because people can still walk through. The FHD is now um, prosecuting the uh, traders in Mapo Street uh, eight or nine times per month, and the operators are in difficulty. So I hope you will be more lenient towards those in the pedestrian precinct. Next, Mr. Chong Yangming. Association of Restaurant Managers. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Members, the Association of Restaurant Managers oppose uh, fixed penalty against shop rent extensions. Um, the issue is very complicated. There are gray areas. If law enforcement is based on the uh, judgment by um, eyesight of the law enforcement agency, uh, laws, uh, law enforcement officers, that will not be fair. There should be a toleration given, say, upon the request of customers. If a temporary uh, table and chair is put in the streets, that should be tolerated. Uh, it should not be equated with littering. For those uh, recalcitrant offenders, those who seriously uh, cause obstruction to uh, residents, um, they should be dealt with. Um, is the problem of the administration or law enforcement agencies which uh, do not have flexibility. The issue is not prosecution but law enforcement, said the Speaker. Uh, the administration should not pass a buck and just uh, hastily come up with a proposal to impose a fixed penalty. That is unfair to all the, uh, the majority of the traders. The administration should not combat small businesses. It should face up to the uh, lack of open seating areas uh, for uh, restra of the restaurants and also high rent uh, encounters by restaurants. The administration should step up its approval, um, its efforts in approving of um, open seating area for restaurants. Next, Ms. Chiu Xiemeng. Chairman, good morning. Uh, would you uh, speak closer to the microphone? Uh, good morning, Chairman, for giving me the opportunity to speak. We also hope that the administration can give us a way. Um, we work very hard. We just do a small business. Um, we just rely on our meager effort uh, to make a living. Um, the um, South e Southeast Asian countries have night bazaars where uh, people can operate food stalls. I hope the administration can do the same so that we can make a living. Next, Mr. Chen Kim Ming. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, government officials. With regard to uh, shop front extensions, we know that we are wrong. But um, uh, the um, officials and the honorable members want to eradicate all of us. Of course, the big restaurants and big restaurant chains will support the government's proposal. But we want to make our own li make our living on our own. Now you can say that the restaurants cause obstruction to the streets. Um, but um, they are also a kind of special feature. 
if they don't affect the people, if they can be allowed to survive, that's very important. Now you invest heavily on your restaurant. I like a boutique. Uh, we cannot move away at any time. We put our lifelong saving into our restaurant. Even if I want to rent a shop next door, I can. I have to spend another year on that. And during this period of time, if you come to prosecute my restaurant, then I really cannot survive. There should be a grace period, maybe a year or half a year, to deal with the problem. If they cannot move in, then you can enforce the law. The district council, the government, and the local trade associations should work together to find suitable places for OSAs, for restaurants, or a food street. And that will help uh, to improve the situation. And then uh, the operators are able to improve health and hygiene and then leave a passage for the um, pedestrians. If you enforce the law, then you will not give a passage. You will not be able uh, to allow us. You can't allow us to make a living. Next, Mr. Lang Kwai Hong. I represent the uh, restaurant restauranters in Cha Tin. It is a newly formed group. We rent a small shop. Uh, is there a licensing system? My shop has just a hundred square feet. You give me a license. Why don't you tell me? that I will not give you a license because your shop is too small. Now my shop is closed for five months. I continue to pay rent. We have organized a, a union to um, exercise self-control, but no uh, district councillors or no councillors have come to uh, help us. I uh, seek help from the councillors, but no one listened to me. They just look down upon us. Um, we will not be successful. Um, I've um, met with uh, the uh, councillors. Um, Miss Yim lives upstairs, and I want to uh, talk to councillors. But the political parties only go to meet the owners' corporations. We also want to talk. We are in difficulty. The uh, squad, the special squad of the FGXD uh, raided us, and re we really dare not switch on our lights. I hope you will go to Sha Tin Wai and see whether it is like a dead uh, place. I represent 60 shops. You make a complaint. The police, the FGXT, all government departments descend on us. Just an anonymous call will bring them onto us, and we don't even have a word to say. The uh, uh, I have meetings with the FGXT and Sha Tin District Council. Uh, twice a week, and uh, nobody listens to me. Um, they came at 3 a.m. They took photos, and four shops would be closed. Uh, four shops would be closed. Well, I am conscientious. Uh, after my shop is closed, I still pay rent. Uh, but for those who are not, they just quit and they don't pay rent to their uh, owners. Now, if you say your shop is too small, you can't trade in the street, uh, then I will give up. You don't give me a license, then I give up. I won't get into that business. Mr. Chen Kim Wai, first of all, I would like to thank the FGXT and the police. They. Uh, 
they are near to us. When they come, they prosecute us. They don't pull punches. Um, though they prosecute us, they say they are not against us. We are not um, cheating or we are not uh, robbing anybody. Well, I I am doing my business in Yunlong. The police came. They said that they received many complaints. We uh, were trading in the street, but when they came, in fact, we didn't even have a table uh, in the courtyard. When they came, they just uh, laughed. And in fact, somebody complained against a restaurant, but in fact, that res restaurant was closed on that day. Well, we put chairs and tables in the streets because there is a demand. Um, we have tables and uh, chairs in the shop as well. When people come, they want to sit in the open sitting area rather than in inside the restaurant. Or rather than inside our, sitting inside our shop. Now they are concerned about the situation in their um, vicinity. Now, if you enforce the law, you have to enforce the law uniformly, and you rely on the frontline officers to enforce the law. Now, I think there should be a platform. Uh, somebody say uh, there should be a platform. You talk to the district councillor, the uh, owners corporation. You should talk to each other and find a solution. If you impose a fine of $1,500, some may just be trading underneath the flyovers or in the back lane. And if you find them, is it fair? Thank you, Mr. Chen. Finally, Mr. Lam Chu Singh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. I'm from uh, Yunlong, the restaurant business representative. For the Yunlong area, many of the business operators actually extend into the streets in our operations. We know that this is not right, but we have no choice. It's been so. Uh, we have rentals to pay, we have salaries to pay to our workers, and given the very high rentals, it's very difficult for us to operate. And the fines from the government are getting higher and higher, and there are multiple fines, and this makes us very, makes it very difficult for us. Now, every 15th, we have to pay our workers every 15th of the month, and we have to pay the fines as well. Uh, it's very difficult for us. I agree with Mr. Wong Park Chin and uh, the speakers who spoke before me, and that is, can we have a better communication? How do we handle this uh, platform? The FEHD, the police, the district councils, how can we handle this as a platform? And hopefully we will be able to have licensing for the Alfresco cafes as soon as possible to create employment for the people within the area as well. Thank you, Mr. Lam. I think all the deputations, uh, organizations, and individuals have uh, spoken. If I can just introduce to you the um, members here 
first of all, uh, we have Mr. Eric Hoy of the Home Affairs, Deputy Director of Home Affairs, Mr. Francis Chu, uh, Senior Consultant, Home Affairs Department, Mr. Sin Kwok Han, Assistant Director, Food and Environmental Hygiene Department, Mr. Leung Yun Sheng, Senior Tup Superintendent, FEHD, Mr. Jacob Cheng, Assistant Commissioner, Hong Kong Police, Mr. Ken Young Man, Superintendent, Hong Kong Police, Ms. Elga Lam, Assistant Director, Lands Department, Mr. Joel Ng, um, Principal Land Executive, Lands Department, and Mr. Jackie Chong, Chief Structural Engineer, Buildings Department. We have a bit more time, and uh, perhaps Mr. Hoi can give an overall response to the uh, views heard in this session. Thank you. Mr. Chair, thank you very much, deputations, for your opinions. As I have mentioned in my previous response in the in the previous session, this kind of efforts will bring on certain effects and consequences to the operators. As in paragraph three in the paper, if we have this uh, these measures, on the one hand, would be more effective in combating street obstruction by shops, but on the other hand, it would adversely affect the business of the shops and also of the workers, possibly. So we have to strike a balance, and we have to consider the views of the different stakeholders. We've been to 16 district councils so far, apart from the from Kuntong and the outlying islands. We have already covered the other 16 uh, district councils and to introduce to them this consultation paper. We understand and respect the opinions from the industry. We have been to the uh, consultative Committee for Convenience of Operation, and we have also attended a meeting yesterday of a working group composed of uh, restaurateurs and eating places operators, and we have heard their very ver valuable opinions. The 14th of July is the concluding date of our consultation period. You can forward us your opinions um, to the Home Affairs. And in fact, we have, at the end of May, received a few hundred submissions already. And you are welcome to give us your opinions through various channels and means. And we will consider them. As mentioned, by the deputations just now, there are a number of concerns voiced by the residents from their position. Um, they would want to see the ro uh, the pedestrian walkways, the, the roads open or reopened. Now, apart from obstruction of the streets causing inconvenience and traffic obstruction, um, Noise is a problem as well in uh, Luther, Luther Way, uh, Kwai Fong, Sha Tin Way, as mentioned just now by the deputations. We have heard from the operators as well, and they say if they are adversely affected, if that is their feeling, we are willing to hear them out. And before the consultation period runs out, we will be uh, listening. And after that, we'll be collating the views of the people of Hong Kong to see whether we should go ahead with the proposal for the fixed penalty fine. We have heard different opinions. And uh, there have been different opinions on how we can improve on the system. Uh, we have made due recordings. We will consider all opinions, <coughs> and then we will forward a final report to the uh, district uh, steering committee for uh, for the to the steering committee before they draw their final conclusion. Um, first of all, we have uh, Ms. Cheung, Mr. Yu. And then we have uh, other colleagues, including uh, Fong Gong, to um, 
ask the questions. How many? Well, we have four minutes each. Four minutes each, starting with uh, Miss Chang. I heard from people I know, and I've looked at the consultation paper. I don't like it. I find because there are two issues here with regard to obstruction or shop front extension. Uh, first of all, the operators are happily extending further and further into the streets. And it's relatively easy for you to say to them that they should uh, take the extension back. But on the other hand, for the restaurants and the eateries, if it is but a 100 square feet to their shop, what do they do? And in particular, for the peak hours, meal times, rather than to have the customers wait in long queues and the customers are in a hurry to have their meals, well, for this kind of extension to put out a, a few more tables, um, do you take the cookie cutter approach, and that is uh, slap $1,500 on anybody and any operator that extends uh, into the streets, whatever the nature. Now, I've heard that uh, somebody owes or is in debt to the tune of uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars because of that. Sometimes we have to look at how we can solve the problems most appropriately rather, rather than to have an across-the-board kind of solution. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, you also go to Europe uh, from time to time, as I do. You know that uh, for some areas in certain cities, they actually allow uh, fresco eateries. Of course, those are uh, bigger areas such as plazas. Um, and perhaps after a certain hour, they can extend into the space or the streets, and they should be allowed to do so, but only do so with uh, licensing and proper approvals. Uh, what about the back alleys? Two to three tables put into the black back alleys, is that uh, admissible? And perhaps uh, you can require that the operator cleans the, the back alley and clean up properly. Uh, otherwise, the approval will be withdrawn. Um, so I think we should be uh, discretionary in the enforcement, and we should look at things from the point of view of the operators and from others as well. So for extensions, perhaps a certain level or limit would be admissible, but not over a certain uh, limit. I mean, there has to be a certain uh, demarcation as well. Now, to slap $1,500 fine on all and sundry that extends into the streets is too onerous. And uh, if we do that, there, there will not Hong Kong's Tai Pai Tong culture will be extinct, and we will not have the unique characteristics that we have anymore. Uh, but of course, it, they cannot uh, cause such nuisance to be completely unacceptable to the residents. But on the other hand, I do not think we should have this kind of across-the-board um, fines or penalty. Um, well, I'm thinking, is this what the people of Hong Kong want? And does paying the $1,500 fine means that the operator will no longer uh, make the same offense? Of course not. And does the $1,500 uh, aid our coffers a lot? No, I, I want there to be a true solution to benefit all in Hong Kong. Yes, I will allow time for uh, the Home Affairs Department to respond, perhaps Mr. Chu. But uh, others in the queue, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I think this is a complicated issue. 18 districts have their own unique situations and the different streets within the different uh, districts whether they are crowded or not, well patronized or not, 
they are different again, and different trades face different um, situations again, whether these are restaurants or eateries, different again, whether these are big operators, small operators, different again. So it is pretty complicated. But given the existing mode of enforcement, it is it has no deterrent effect, and the, it takes too long for the uh, to to for the prosecution uh, prosecution process. Uh, Ms. Chang um, pointed to unique characteristics of a district, the operation of the or business of the operators themselves, but at the same time, it does cause nuisance and disturbance to the residents and the citizens. Yes, we have to look at all these issues. I'm looking at paragraph 9 of our LegCo paper. The government had made a proposal there, and that is the district councils are familiar with the local scene and the situation, and the district councils do are uh, answerable to the uh, voters, including the constituency, including the operators. So, in fact, they are they have to face two types of um, groups, and that is the residents as well as the operators. And that is why, in the penalty and the fine, the government can listen to the uh, or hear out the district councils before coming up with a proposal to the enforcement de uh, departments. I think that would be a better and more objective way of going about it. I heard uh, Mr. Hoi of the Home Affairs Department just now. Uh, he said that he's been to 16 districts and talked to 16 district councils, but I have not heard that in providing opinions to the Home Affairs, what the district councils have to say. I heard in the first round some of the district councillors would not want to take up that responsibility in fear that they will run foul of both sides, both parties. But I think they will have to understand the uh, plight of the residents as well as the operators and strike a balancing point. On the one hand, prosecute those offenders who cause problems and at the same time uh, provide advice and uh, for how to improve the situation, but at the same time show some leniency in the enforcement or fining. I would like to know after having been to the district councils in 16 districts, what are their views on this particular point or proposal? Thank you, Chairman, and thank you uh, for the views given by two members. Ms. Chang is of the view that she is not happy with the paper in certain respect. Uh, it says that uh, she says it is an across the board um, proposal, too broad bar brush. I said in the paper, we want to involve the district council so that we may consider local characteristics without affecting safety, without causing serious obstruction, some uh, tolerance, or at least delay in law enforcement can be made. Even before the introduction of new measures, there are eight spots in five districts which are given tolerance. Say uh, in Hong Ham in the first session, mentioned in the first session. So we don't propose a broad brush approach. Uh, we consider local characteristics without affecting safety or causing Im imminent danger. The law enforcement departments will consult the district council to adopt some special to uh, special treatment to certain areas. As for the consultation with the district councils, I didn't mention that because I have not been to all the 18 district councils. It will not be appropriate for me to come to any preliminary conclusion. Uh, but since the member asked, uh, I can say something on that. Some uh, say that the proposal is appropriate. The district council should be consulted 
on the black spots and the priority of law enforcement. Some district councillors of the view that uh, the discretion will be transferred to the district councils, and therefore that is not appropriate. So in the first phase, I've already, uh, first session, I've already said that the administration is not going to give law enforcement power to other bodies. The law is to be enforced by the head of department, and it will be delegated. The authority will be delegated to the frontline enforcement officers. Generally, the district councils support our proposal to step up law enforcement, and number two, to introduce a fixed penalty tickets, and it has to be a deterrent. In order to be a deterrent, the amount should be $1,500 or above. We have not come to any conclusion because we have not been to all 18 district councils. Some district councillors do support tolerance. Say if it has local characteristics, if the street is wide enough, if circumstances permit, then that can be tolerated. As I said, in five districts, in eight spots, there is tolerance. But some district councils believe that if it is in breach of the law, it is in breach of law even if it is in breach by extending into the street by one inch. There is no need to delay law enforcement. It should be done uniformly in whatever street, whatever local characteristics, the same yardstick of law, law enforcement should be observed. As for fixed penalty, like in the first session, uh, there are similar views. Some suggest a uh, progressive system. That is, uh, the first offense, one ticket, the minimum. We have no specific proposal, but some uh, use 1,500 as a reference. In the second offense, should that be doubled? Say, uh, if the starting point is 1,500, then the second offense will be 3,000. This will be difficult to enforce, uh, to enforce because you have to clarify whether it is a first offense or a second offense or third offense. In enforcing the law, it will cause conflicts or arguments between the law enforcement officer and the operator. Whether it is in breach of the law is disputable and whether it is the second or third or fourth offence is also dis uh, disputable. Now, within a reasonable period of time, if there is no rectification, then should uh, another ticket be given after the first ticket? But if you don't come back after so many hours or after so many days, then um, the operator will continue to offence the law with no qualms. Our view is that if an offence has taken place and a ticket has been issued, and within a reasonable period of time, if there is no rectification, then the person or the offender can be prosecuted again, just like an illegal parking. If we park a car illegally, we receive the first ticket. It doesn't mean that we can still park our car there. We can uh, have the second ticket. Mr. Hoy, I think um, you have to stop here. There are members who are waiting. I um, will deal with it flexibly. I will allow members uh, to give their views. And also, um, I allow members to um, know what uh, you are doing and what is the progress so far. I believe there will be a report uh, which uh, will spell out the different views of the district council. The best is to know the position of each and every district councillor, four, uh, 400 odd of them. Well, I, I, I'm not going to provide all. Uh, so I'm not going to provide such details. I'm just responding to the question of Ms. Yeo. I think the more the information, the better. People of Hong Kong are very matured, and they really want to know more information. Next, Mr. Chong Kok Chiu. Four minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I thank the deputations for coming, uh, the deputations of this session and the previous session. Uh, those who do business don't want fixed penalty. And the residents don't want street obstruction. But no one side will win all. 
Now the government proposes to impose fixed temp fixed penalty because the problem is serious. The question is whether the law has not been enforced and therefore the problem has become serious. Uh, whether the administration has not done anything, so the matter has got out of hand, and therefore you want to adopt a strong arm, a strong arm tactic. Any new law, any new measure, will not be able to make everybody happy. A fixed penalty will make the shop operators unhappy. And the uh, residents may say, after fixed penalty is imposed, uh, there are still many uh, shop extensions. Now, some speakers have uh, made some suggestions. Now, can you establish platforms with representatives? from the government, from the residents, and from the traders to decide on how um, people can accommodate each other's, uh, accommodate each other and exercise um, self-restraint, self-discipline, self-control. And then for those um, who are recalcitrant, of course, you can enforce the law hard on them. We, if we to, and if we are to enforce the law humanely, we need to enforce the law um, suitably or appropriately. Uh, we can form a local platform. We should try it out. If we have not tried it before, why should we adopt other measures? Uh, such as draconian laws uh, to deal with the problem. Perhaps the uh, district offices can tell us whether they have tried any such platform. Have they tried it, and how is it? Uh, how is the outcome? If they have not tried it before, will they try it out? You you can't have the law ready tomorrow, so why can't you try it out, Mr. Hoy? Thank you, Chairman, and thank you for the question. In our consultation in paragraphs 1.3 and 1.4, we did mention the previous situation. It said that despite the efforts made by the administration to deal with shop extension, the problem is still there, and it has spread, and it has caused uh, obstruction to the road users, uh, the drivers, the um, Pedestrians. That explains why we think we need to step up enforcement and how we should strengthen our law enforcement. We believe we need to improve the situation by imposing uh, fixed penalty. I don't want to know why they uh, introduce fixed penalty. I just want to know whether you have tried other means. In fact, fixed penalty is not a good way, and it's nothing new. But will you try, say, for example, form a platform? As far as I know, uh, there uh, has been. Now, concerning the f eight uh, spots uh, in five districts, they are given tolerance. They are achieved through various means. Uh, some uh, achieved through the district councils. Some achieved through the efforts of um, the department, uh, the district offices of the department, and district councillors and the DMC. Some uh, were uh, some achieved um, through, say, um, law enforcement departments and trade representatives. Um, talking to each other. I do not have detailed numbers. I um, I have seen examples of reaching consensus. But if you want something comprehensive, I don't have the numbers. Just to follow up, I don't want to stand in the way of other members. Since you have such in uh, such experience of tried in different districts in different areas, can you give us a uh, paper? so that we may follow the matter up. Uh, that uh, uh, will try to uh, address uh, the question raised by the representatives. 
well, we are able to get information from the district council and also the DMCs. Uh, but um, we also have to liaise with the law enforcement uh, agencies. Uh, Mr. Vincent Fang, thank you, Chairman, for giving me the floor. I'm not a member. And I would also like to thank the deputations for coming. Why they spend a whole good morning to be uh, bored by uh, this uh, meeting. They should spend their time to do their business. but. The proposal will have a very important, serious impact on their business, and therefore, they um, just uh, stay away from their business and come to express their views. I oppose fixed penalty. Fixed penalty is to make life easy uh, to the law enforcement agencies. Just uh, if they extend an inch, uh, I will issue a ticket. If it is a second offense, then three thousand dollars. Uh, that is um, convenient for law enforcement agencies. You don't need real human beings. You just get robots to do it. You can get robots to do it. You need to be sympathetic. Fine, fine, and fine. It's so easy. There are many local characteristics. Now, the flower market, it started from scratch. Now they have very good business. A big crowd. Has the administration pay a cent? Has the administration helped them? In fact, they have created this uh, pros prosperous business. They become prosperous. Their shops um, um, command high rents, and then the um, residential units also command high prices. The residents complain. You want. Um, the uh, shops to disappear, then what will be the consequence? Uh, property prices will go down and they keep silent. Yamate, the uh, fruit market, fruit wholesale market has brought a, a lot of business to Hong Kong. The government has not helped them. Uh, the government just uh, conducts rates on them. There are many uh, government markets, why there are no patrons. Uh, the government just don't know how to do, uh, the government doesn't know how to do business. When they have good business, you enforce the law against them. As mentioned by Ms. Chang, in Europe, they have uh, street stalls, they have uh, Frisco dining, open air seating. Uh, people like that in Europe. Is the business in Hong Kong very good? Hong Kong's economy is going down. You, you civil servants, uh, have pay every month. You have pension. You have nothing to worry. But those who are sitting here worry. They have to pay rent. They have to pay salary, um, and they have to pay fine if they trade in the streets. And they are worry about. Uh, no business. They have a lot more to worry than you civil servants. You don't uh, really know what life really is. You only know how to enforce, you only uh, enforce the law. If you step out of line, I impose a fine on you. It's easy. As easy as that, but you need to be sympathetic. Uh, that's why people have grievances. You create all these. Uh, we don't have a roof over our head. We don't have good education. Uh, we have no way to make a living. Just give us a chance to make a living. Next, Mr. Vincent Fang says that this broad brush approach is problematic. But the broad brush approach also have merits. There is simplicity, and everybody can follow. Well, I've heard two sessions of discussions and deputations. I think we are trying to solve a very important uh, contradiction. Well, first of all, if we go by a uh, broad stroke approach, 
uh, we will be killing off a lot of business opportunities. But on the other hand, if we do not, then they will cause these business opportunities will thrive, but there will be traffic obstruction, uh, cleanliness problems, noise pollution, etc. So between these two, we have to find a point where we can manage and not snub out any business opportunities. Now, one way forward is on this simplistic one-stroke approach, there can be, as Mr. Cheung Kwok Chiu mentioned, uh, we can build a platform. But this platform is even finer in detail. And it will be more difficult to wield or to operate. I would like to ask the deputations who have come up today if this platform is to be operated by the district council. Do you think it will solve the problem? If it's not the district council, are there any other ways to go about it? Or are you in favor of broad stroke? Uh, penalty and fining, but we will exempt certain areas or exempt certain shops. The flower market, I think we're all in agreement for exemption, let's say, or for some other areas as well. Would the district council be the right entity to operate that? Whom are you asking? Uh, the deputations, and in particular, from the shops, from the business owners. Can the district councillors help? And district councillors may also want to respond. Given the limitation in time, let me just ask who's going to respond to this. Yes. Mr. Ho and then Mr. Wong. As a district councillor, as a bridge between the, among the uh, stakeholders within the district, I think I have the following to say for restaurants and alfresco eateries, they're getting more and more numerous. And uh, there are more and more complaints from the residents. And we cannot go in there and just uh, close them or warn them. We basically report this to the police. Perhaps. At the licensing point, we can provide certain terms that this shop can extend for two to three tables outside of the shop. But perhaps the businesses may think two to three tables are not enough. Then, well, they can go to the FEHD, uh, discuss with them, and we, the FEHD can refer to us, the district council and for us to discuss. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, there were instances where I myself was seated at the outside table, and uh, the shop was allowed two to three tables of extension. But when more customers came along, uh, the shop opened up more folding tables. And that happened. Um, but I can tell you for sure, but this is something that we can deliberate further to see whether there's a better way of going about it. But I can tell you for now that the FEHD enforcement officers not sufficient in their work. Um, Mr. Mong, Wong, well, I'm not in support of uh, putting out of tables irrespective. And I also know that the uh, requirements are very low at this point, and the operators <coughs> do not feel that they are in the right. And they recognize the fact, well, I've talked to them, uh, they also recognize the fact that putting out a six feet uh, table is just not right, and they want to abide by the law. Now, there was a shop which was closed down. And uh, I heard from the FEHD that that uh, it's like a calling of loan from the banks. And small uh, residents such as us 
we usually do not participate in this kind of uh, affairs. Uh, but uh, because of this closure, forcible closure of the shop, we are organizing amongst ourselves, residents. We are raising a case for judicial review for 128 bracket B C because we are a harmonious society. Why are we creating all these controversies? As Mr. Chen Kuo Chu, Mr. Fang Gong, and Mr. Yu had pointed out, why do we not come up with a better solution? The district council can play a role, definitely. But I think the it's very curious for the uh, owners' corporation, they side with them rather than with the operators, and that's not right. Mr. Wong Kin Yu would also want to respond, be succinct. Well, the three members in response to them concerning the platform. The Home Affairs had had two meetings with us. And the my vice chairman was the uh, uh, owners corporation uh, exco member, and uh, he did not attend some of the meetings. Now we were talking about overseas uh, experience. You know, uh, I wonder whether we can follow suit. For restaurants in Hong Kong, I mean, we have to wake up from our dreams. Four, five, six tables extending into the streets, that's not a problem. I think it is the operator, the boss, the business owner, whether they can exercise self-discipline. Um, the building I live in is hip war building, or, or uh, where I operate is a hip war building, and I we issued letters um, asking for a meeting of the owners, but uh, when the shop closure uh, came and uh, the the government spoke up, they wanted to participate. I mean, the main thing is for the shop owners to toe the line and. Uh, I am a tenant. I also eat downstairs at these operators. If you go to Chun Wan, you should be able to see Carlock and Lang Hung, these two shops. There are only uh, 10 or 20 seats inside the shop, and every day there are queues outside. Is it true that they are so tasty? They have food, um, and they said why they're extending into the streets. Carlock actually operates 11 to 6. Lang Hung the entire family and their rel relatives work in the shop from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And can you speak uh, to the chair? I understand you are very worked up, and I we get your point. The I, I'm sorry about that because of the constraint in time. Uh, Mr. Wong, you're a senior member of the Let Show. You'll be able to speak uh, succinctly, I believe. Yes, I would like to respond to the points made just now. And in fact, we have regular meetings with the uh, FEHD and the, Rele and the Home Affairs Department. But uh, I would say the Operators do not attend the meetings, perhaps one or two of them only. So I'm asking whether this is indeed effective as a platform. I think given this new situation, it might be, be become more effective because the present proposal forces them to participate on this platform. As district councillors, and we have colleagues here from the district councils, why are we coming up with views so much in opposition of the others? Because if you think about it, residents in the building, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. at night, if you're not living in that building, you will not feel the pain that they feel. For mothers with babies, the, the babies wake up. And in the middle of the night, when the babies wake up, the parents can scarcely sleep. For the family, this is very grave and long-term pain, and it's felt, this pain is felt every day, and that is why, to a certain extent, we are so much in favor of this proposal. 
In the past, the government had not handled it in the right way, and we feel that uh, this time there will be improvements with this proposal. In fact, this meeting should run till twelve thirty, but uh, there are two members who want to speak a second round. So I would want to extend this meeting. I ask for your understanding, Miss Chang and Cheng, and uh, Mr. Fang Gong, all speaking a second round, three minutes each. Miss Chang, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to put a question to the deputations and individuals who've come up today. Some of you are in support of strengthening of law enforcement and especially for those representing residents and property owners. Now, I'd like to know from your heart, let's say if the shops extend Let's say if the street is about 10 feet wide and this shop extends for two to three feet, do you find that acceptable? And secondly, I would like to know for the people who support stricter law enforcement, for the nighttime eateries, can you allow a certain period of time during which they can extend into the streets, put out a few tables. Of course, it cannot run through the night, but for a period of time, would that be acceptable? Now, because I want to have better time control, please raise your hand uh, if you want to respond, and I will give priority to those who have not spoken up so far. Ms. Yim Shok, uh, Ms. Yim. Um, Ms. Chang, to respond to your question, you asked for uh, our opinions from the heart. Well, actually, the Owners Corporation is very clear in its terms of reference. We have to manage the public areas, and we are receiving complaints from the residents, and they, some of them feel that it's futile reporting to us, and they are going to the authorities, and we are forced to do something. I hope uh, this also responds to Fang Gong, Mr. Fang Gong's point about uh, living from, uh, in, from fresh air only that is um, not knowing the uh, real situation. But I can tell you there are residents who was not able to uh, sleep at night. I mean, this is a property owner in Sha Tin Wai. If you come here at night, you will know what kind of clean, what kind of air we sustain ourselves on, what kind of nuisance they are causing. And this resident is uh, in a depression now, uh, suffering from psychological disturbance, and and uh, so the. Uh, Property owners have gone to the district councillors asking them whether they can help, and the district councillors say, we are at odds with your owner's corporation and we cannot help you. Perhaps we, you say we think ourselves as victims, but this is how we feel from the heart. Can you imagine spending time uh, in the in the flat with a, an aged mother over 80 years old, but there is not one night of peaceful sleep. Uh, Mr. Chung, go to your second round, three minutes only. Well, I'm not going to speak on long-standing uh, problems. They have to be dealt with, in particular the uh, specific examples. I'm not saying that uh, the platform itself will uh, be something like an autopilot. We need somebody to help. Say, for example, the district office. You have liaison officers. <laughs> to do community building. The platform is not as big as Wen Chai. Now, when there is a dispute, um, you can form a platform to solve the problem. 
the, the, the platform may not solve all the problems. If they can't solve the problem, then we will resort to the law, and we enforce a hard on them. But uh, if you enforce a hard on them, um, you will cause strong reactions. You can't solve all the problem. You need um, to bring relief. You need to provide a chance for people to let off some steam. And that's the uh, function of the platform. You cannot leave the issue to its own destiny. You can't rely on the district council if the government officials don't step in. Uh, Mr. Ng, you're a district councillor. You have a meeting um, twice a year. But we're talking about a platform which may have a meeting once every month. And if the problem is resolved, we may if the problem is resolved, then we may have less frequent meetings. We shouldn't uh, leave the platform to its own destiny. You should try it out. Uh, the government should tell us uh, whether the platform is successful or not. If it is not successful, is it because the platform is not provided with adequate resources and manpower? Well, if you um, impose draconian laws, there will be strong reactions. They will just consider $1,500 as rent, part of the rent, and they pay the fine and they cause, then they continue to cause nuisance. They can even pay $3,000 and they continue to occupy the streets. You only try, you, you only cause further agitations. Um, I think you've given your view. I believe um, it is a. Uh, I think Mr. Hoy is going to provide some uh, a, a written reply. So I hope the reply can be can can have um, a lot of details. I really want to know what has been done by the dis district office and uh, whether the intervention is successful. Now, Mr. Vincent Fang, you have three minutes. Chairman, it is a very complicated issue. It is about making a living. It's also about uh, people's livelihood. It's about, uh, and it's difficult to um, find a balance. The government has to find a suitable balance. You cannot uh, just adopt a simple approach. Um, am I just concerned about business and I don't care about people's living? Absolutely not. I agree with Mr. Chung. We should form a platform. My experience is that when there is a dispute, if we continue uh, to confront each other, we can't solve the problem. If, if you get a trade association and talk to them, now you have caused obstruction by putting your flower pots uh, on the um, staircase, on the uh, pavement. People can't walk through. If there is a government official, a district councillor, a representative of a trade association, and then they can talk and then um, try to provide a way for both parties. And you should, um, we should accommodate. Well, it's not right to f impose a fine if the extension is just for an inch, but it's also not right if um, they occupy the whole pavement and don't allow the pedestrians through. We should um, try to find a solution, a win-win solution. I think uh, Mr. Chang's suggestion of a platform should be given a try. There should be representatives from the trade association. The representative of the trade association will not just concern about the interests of the trade only. If the trade association, if um, the uh, members occupy the pavement and don't allow pedestrians to walk through, the trade representative will go to sc um, give a uh, scolding to the member. 
Mr. Hoi, uh, will you have uh, do you have further supplement? I've already said that looking at previous examples, I have seen that through the district council, um, through consultation uh, of with the DMC or by the DMC, through uh, discussion between trade association and FEHD or other law, law enforcement agencies, uh, some agreements have been reached. I will seek further information on the case uh, on the situation of the eight cases. All right. If no members want to uh, follow up, I still have a little time left. Mr. Chong uh, has uh, not spoken before. I give you a, um, um, a short um, supplement. I allow you a short supplement. There is a successful example. I am the chairman of Kun Tong Central Area Committee. Many complained against Sri Wall Street Market, uh, against uh, serious street obstruction. Through the district office and district council, the situation is acceptable. I dare say so. There may be room for uh, further improvement. The district officer and the uh, district council chairman worked um, with the uh, traders, and they made substantial improvements to Shoiwa Street Market. There is street extension to a certain extent, four feet for each shop, and no more. Um, we try to accommodate each other. The shops can make a living, the shop operators can make a living, and people can walk through. Um, the government should allow uh, open area seating. Um, a line is drawn somewhere. You cannot step beyond the line. So Wall Street Market is an example. I don't mind providing the information how they did it. If there is no policy, say I allow you uh, to extend to um, into the street uh, by how much? If uh, they have only 100 square feet, how can they survive? Um, people in Hong Kong have bad habits, and the government has to educate them. They don't. They they want to shop in the street. They don't want to go into the shop. Even a shop has a thousand square feet. Um, they don't go into the thousand square feet shop. They just buy in the street. Mm, that may be because of their bad nature. I, I, if I may say so. I know why they uh, extend into the street. Uh, in particular, the uh, restaurant. Uh, that's the uh, smoking control. That's because of the smoking control. People don't uh, sit inside. Um, the restaurant, they sit in the street because if they sit in the street, they can smoke. The government has not provided a solution. You just um, stop. You try to stop the uh, river flow, but uh, that's not right. Before I end this meeting, I want to ask Mr. Hoi. Now, the consultation will last until the 14th of July. How much time do you need to collate uh, the views collected? And when will you come back to this council to make a rep to make a report and tell us whether whether you are going to form a platform or propose a law and uh, balance? Uh, that is, I think today is out of balance. Uh, you, uh, you won't be happy. You just come here to air your grievances. This very that is very um, crucial. What is your timetable, Mr. Hui? At the district council meetings, at the meetings with trade, 
uh, I've, uh, I've been asked on a timetable and roadmap. I can tell you the roadmap, but not the timetable, because I don't have a timetable. On the 14th of July, the end of consultation will consult, will collate the information. I don't know how many submissions I will receive. I don't know how many meetings I have to attend. So before I have any idea about it, I really don't know how much time I need to collate the information. As as said by the chairman, we are to provide detailed information as detailed as possible, so we can't uh, just muddle through. Now we will compile the report for the steering committee on district administration, and they will have to consider whether mainstream opinions are supportive of our proposal, and if they are to change the law, then the government will have to go through certain procedures. Uh, it has to uh, go to the exco. If there is to amend, uh, if there is amendment of the law, and then instruction will be given to the uh, D of J for law drafting, and then um, we will have to go back to the Home Affairs panel after the draft is ready, and then we will have to go to the Bills Committee. Uh, that's a roadmap. As for timetable, it really uh, depends on uh, what, uh, how much information we have got at the end of the consultation. Now we have a summer break in October when the council resumes. When will you uh, finish collating the information, and how soon will you come back? We'll do it ASAP. And when we have the uh, details, we will come back to the panel. I'm the vice chairman, and the chairman, Mr. Ma, will follow the matter up. Uh, I and Mr. Ma will follow the matter up. We welcome uh, your further submissions, and you can also talk to uh, the councillors. Thank you very much. Meeting is adjourned. No need for an applause, for any applause. Thank you.